Hey, welcome back to Rob's Garage Woodworking. Today I just want to talk a little bit about buying a used tent trailer. Now, some of these uh, tent trailers you think are a really good value until you find out all the issues that uh, it has wrong with it. So, there's a couple of things you want to look for. We'll go over that. Um, first and foremost, tent trailers are all very similar. Almost all of them will sleep six people. So the dinettes will sleep two people, and usually the bed ends will sleep two people. Uh, there's a few occasions where um, the manufacturer has tried to upsell you to the next model by making one of the bed ends smaller. Um, so you got to watch out for that. Most of them will sleep six people, regardless of size. If it's an 8-foot box, a 10-foot box, or a 12-foot box, they will all sleep basically the same amount of people. I'm just going to grab the camera, and I'm going to walk around, and i show you some things to look for. Alright, to start out with, this one has a wheel on it on the bottom here. So that wheel, you can take that off. And that is really handy when you're moving it around your house um, and even around the campsite. Um, some people, when they get their trailer, have lost the wheel. So look for the wheel. And then your hitch, make sure that your hitch functions properly. It comes up, it moves, and that it has a spot for a locking pin. Some of the older ones don't, so you want to make sure that you can lock it. But that's really old, like old, old, old. Anyway, <clears throat> make sure that your jack works. You can jack it up. Obviously, you know, you have to make sure that we have safety chains. Your four pin harness is there and that functions. Uh, there we go. And inside, you've got your, up your trailer crank and this will uh, crank up the trailer. Make sure it's got that. Now, on the outside, it should have four of these locks. Make sure that they function properly. They're cam locks normally, so you can adjust them. So that works like that. Put it in, and then it locks it in place. Some of these have locks, some of them don't. This one only has one lock on one side. Okay, then on the sides here, you can see the uh, manufacturer's certification labels. Um, the maximum weight of this is 1,500 pounds. And what else is it? It tells you your wheel size and the date of manufacture and a few other things. So on the sides, I've got a couple of these blank off plates here. That means they've removed the plumbing and stuff. Over here, this is the connection for electrical, which has also been removed. Make sure all of your lights are there. Make sure your lights work. Uh, obviously the spare tire, make sure the spare tire is there, make sure it's the right size. Um, look for things like this. My light is cracked, so. All right, so the stabilizer jacks, they fold down like this, then you can release them there. And then over here, you can put a bar in and put the bar in and crank it this way. That pushes this down and stabilizes it. Add some more pressure, all right. Now, along here, you can see there's a lot of caulking in the seam. The seam is on the outside of the tin the tin should be over top of that seam. So that's a manufacturing design defect. And you'll see a lot of trailers have that same issue. You see I've covered all the bolts and things with a silicone sealer because it can leak, right? One uh, security latch, safety latch, that has the lock in it. So I just put a pin in that so it can't open up. And along here too, you'll see I've put caulking, I've run caulking all along here. So normally, this is the top seam here, and they have putty tape that they put underneath it, and the putty tape uh, eventually just breaks down and wears out. And when I rebuilt the roof of this one, there usually is like a, a rubber uh, cover for this, and it was all broken, so I ended up just fi filling it with caulking. Now, another thing that this one has is uh, it has this roof rack. And one of the original owners 
uh, made this roof rack and attached it to the roof. Most of them attach right about here and they bolt in, but this board is very thin and uh, very weak and chances are if you uh, attach things to it, sometimes you can get water in there and then it rots out and then your roof rack can come off. Uh, there are a lot of people that have the specially made roof racks for these. Uh, this one was a homemade job, which is fine. It's actually very secure on the inside and I can show you that after. And I used some aluminum bars across this and it turns out the aluminum was too weak so I had to double it up. <laughs> so that's why it looks different. And then on top of that, I have uh, four bike carriers that are close together. You put one bike one way and one the other way. And then space in the middle, I left for uh, a kayak or paddleboard, whatever. Notice the other seam. This is like a folded seam inside. So that shouldn't leak, but I put caulking on it anyway. And then another thing you want to do is make sure around your... Uh, skylight roof vent that it's not dented in, pushed in, and it's not leaking around that. So this one's in really good shape still. The plastic is in really good shape still. And I just added some sealant all the way around it just for good measure. Okay, so the tires on this, it's hard to see really. It's kind of bright out here. Um, the tires, if you look at the tire itself you'll see there's actually a wear mark on the inside the outside of the tire the tread looks really good the inside the tread is uh, really worn on the inside so this trailer has a really nice little suspension setup it's like a trailing arm um, uh, torsion like a rubber uh, torsion spring sort of thing and uh, yeah I don't know the proper term for it but it's really nice, but what happens is, as, uh, as it gets older, it starts to weaken and the trailer is a little bit lower, so the wheels aren't straight anymore, they're off camber a little bit. That's gonna wear out your tires a little prematurely. So that's something to think about. How old is this? Am I gonna have to replace those? Because that's when it starts to get expensive when you start replacing suspension parts and things. Tires. <laughs> They can run you between, you know, 30 bucks and 100 bucks a piece, depending. Another thing you want to do is repack your bearings. I haven't done that yet on this one, which I probably should do that. I do like the torsion suspension because like, you could shake it and stuff, and it settles, it settles down pretty quickly over like a leaf spring that'll just keep bouncing. So that's a little nicer suspension. Another thing you're going to want to be able to do, since quite often, um, you know, we're all busy nowadays, you know, you're a lot of single parents, stuff like that. Or, you know, the husband and wife can't make it to the campground at the same time. You're going to have to be able to set this up by yourself. So a lot of these trailers can be very difficult. Uh, this one's not so bad. Okay, so this is the inside of the trailer, all right? right? So you gotta make sure that there's no spots where bugs or anything can come in. Right up here, this big reinforcing plate, and this one over here, those are the ones that the uh, first owner used to mount the uh, roof rack system on. So that's good and solid. Now, what you'll see in these trailers, you see that there? That's a little bit of mold, and you can see up here, this shows signs of being wet, right? So here's the rest of the roof, and then you get to the ends, 
and it's like that. So think to yourself, well, why is that? Well, this canvas, especially the older canvas, that will wick up moisture. So it will get wet and it'll wick it up. So it'll get wet here and then this sits down on the trailer with the roof closed and then you've got wet canvas touching that wood and that'll rot the wood out. And you'll see certain spots are prone to it, especially the front and the back. The sides don't seem to get it as much, but on this trailer, the front and the back. And this trailer is really not bad. Um, it can be much, much worse. Another thing you can do is check your floor. Um, the floor is not very strong on these, but some are really weak. And some places have real weak spots. So look for that. Now, you can see here, this doesn't look very professional, right? Well, the original owner, or the second owner, took out the uh, stove top and everything, and the fridge, and put in some storage containers. So here's your table. You can lift it up, which I'm not going to do right now, because everybody's seen this stuff before. But underneath this spot, is storage all the way down and underneath this spot is storage all the way down and then in the middle is your table you put a leg on it you lift it up and you've got your tabletop so the bed end sleeps too tabletop dining area sleeps too and back here you can sleep too so what else do you need to look for around here you've got to look for any leaks this is really really good make sure that this functions opens up closes all the way and then you've got to look for your screens screens are um, relatively easy to fix um, but the windows and stuff the plastic you know once you start sewing sewing's really expensive unless you're gonna do it all yourself and canvas is really heavy so if you're gonna do it yourself by hand it's gonna take forever and if you do it, uh, if you take it in somewhere, it's going to cost you six or seven hundred dollars to get canvas redone. So yeah, it's not worth it. Once the canvas is gone, your trailer is pretty much garbage. All right, over here, you can see how this is pulling apart. That's the front end of the trailer here, and that is a seam. So what happens is water can run along here and you can fall into that hole, and then rot out this section here underneath and you don't even see it until this part starts peeling away. Again, check around your wheel wells, make sure that that's not all rotted. That looks really good. Underneath it looks really good. The wheel wells are tin in this one. Back here you can see the spot again. I've got caulking on it. It doesn't really stick to this aluminum. But yeah, it's kind of a bad design. So some designs are better than others. This one I find the late 80s these designs are kind of poor and then these posts here what you do is you wrap this around and this is supposed to you know clip that on there and then velcro this here and that keeps all the water out and stuff so basically that's what it looks like so yeah and this one also has a spot, if you look at that spot right up at the top there, it comes along. It has a rope recess for an awning. And this one didn't come with an awning, but they are available. So another thing to look for is rips around the bottom. You can see how this one is, they've tried to sew it up and they've tried to use these iron on patches and everything. This is the bed right here. And it has this long hinge that's down there. So the bottom of the bed looks really good. But this part here is uh, wearing out, right? And there's a hole there. And specifically the hole on this one is caused because of where the, uh, the support rod inside to hold this end up. This rod here, it comes down and the bar ends right here. So it pushes on this a lot. So on this model, there's also an outside light with a switch. Um, if you camp at an electrical campground, um, 
you can plug your trailer in that light is like an amber light it's supposed to be bug free I can come on and then over here you can actually plug in because this is an outlet you can plug in other things all right so this tent trailer doesn't have a stove and a sink and uh, a fridge in it and that doesn't bother me well, why is that because they market these as you can do everything in these trailers but you really shouldn't so if you're somewhere where there's no wild animals basically you're gonna camp in your backyard then fine but if you're gonna camp somewhere where there's cougars and there's wolves and there's bears especially bears um, bears are hungry all the time and you know what if they smell something good in your trailer they're just gonna rip this open and they're gonna climb right in and everybody's gonna be in there with the bear and he's gonna eat your dinner and he might you know you might get in the way of his food which is your dinner is his dinner <laughs> so you know that could be the end of you so we don't eat in the trailer we don't eat chips in the trailer we don't drink beverages in the trailer we just sleep in the trailer okay <laughs> that way it's safe I don't have to worry about bears coming into my trailer because there's nothing interesting inside my trailer for bears right and uh, yeah so if you have a trailer that's hard sided like this one like this old beastie here you can cook and stuff in this because it's a hard sided trailer you know it's a lot more difficult for a bear to get into this now this is the old fashioned canvas here if you look at the front and the rear it has the better canvas on it you'll see the difference right this is the old fashioned canvas that you can treat and this is like a plasticky coating on top of your canvas which is really nice um, this is much much better so if you can steer clear of this type of canvas and just have this type all the way around it's a it's a better trailer so that's something else to look for and you'll see here a little bit of mold and stuff on it look for mold in different places and see like if it's on the outside of this stuff it's on the outside it's not a big deal if it's on this part then yeah it's harder to get rid of another thing to look for too is drip edges so the water's going to run down here and if there's no drip edge normally the drip edge hangs lower and the water runs off the bottom well if there's no real drip edge then it runs along and then it hits the wood underneath so it's nice to have a bit of a drip edge over another spot to have a good drip edge is along here so around this or that's the uh, the post that raises and lowers it where that is if you have a bigger drip edge there so that the water doesn't get in and it would be nicer if this had a drip edge that hung down all the way over like this and velcroed into the side but that's not how it's made like I said they're made pretty cheaply now so hopefully this has given you guys some ideas on what to look for when you're buying a used trailer remember to go out and look at some of the new ones that you can compare you understand the features you understand what's going on find out exactly what the prices of a new one are because some people are selling their used ones for a really high amount and it's not necessarily worth that much money I purchased this one from a friend for four hundred dollars and uh, overall it's been really good the only thing I've really done to it is I've replaced uh, the wood and the roof here all the sides in the front all the way along but not the top so I was able to do like a, a minor major repair <laughs> <laughs> and uh, get that straightened out but certain trailers are different lengths and widths things like that um, I like the small trailers the small trailers are light you can tow them easily um, you are going to tow it with you know your family vehicle your SUV your minivan um, possibly a truck if you have a truck then you don't have to be concerned about towing but if you're gonna tow with a minivan or a small SUV or something be very mindful of the weight um, my CRV can only tow 1500 pounds and this is a small trailer so it's towable and uh, yeah so you want to be mindful of that and if you have uh, 
the older style transmissions where you can buy a tranny cooler for your vehicle buy the transmission cooler because that can prolong the life of your vehicle especially if you're going to tow with it all right anyway thanks for watching